volume part two. Here is a region in the plane. And if you watch this Desmos, I am revolving it about the Y axis. What we see in red, so if you follow in red, this is the technique. This, this red object is called a cylindrical shell. You notice if I back up, Initially, this red is parallel to the axis of revolution. And, and this is the technique we will learn today. We can consider a representative rectangle parallel to the axis of revolution. And this technique can, we can use when um, well, just what you read when discs or washers seems, seems difficult. And I will do an example like that. But this part is why I was sort of stressing perpendicular, perpendicular, perpendicular when we did this in washers, because now we have another method where the represented rectangle is parallel to the axis of revolution. So let's look at an example. We have two different curves and we're taking the region, it's this and this bound by the two. We could, for instance, find out where this happens by setting them equal. So we have x minus x squared is zero, x one minus x is zero. They're equal at x is zero and one, or the points of intersection will be zero, zero, and one. Zero. Okay, so now let's graph this just based on what we've calculated, and we will try to realize. Well, if we tried to do this or washers, why would this be an issue? Okay, let's graph this. We'll graph it up here. We have zero, zero, we have one, zero, and then we have the line y equals zero. Okay, but then the other curve, x minus x squared, it's quadratic, and we have a negative on the x squared, so it will face down. And we know it goes through these two points. So it's going to be a quadratic. It'll be something like this. And this is y is x minus x squared. So you see our region, s. Okay. And what am I revolving this about? Y axis. Okay, wonderful. Like this. What happens? Okay. I've already prefaced this here saying we're going to have some troubles, but let's see what the trouble is. Or we will have, what do I say? A challenge. What's the problem? If I slice this way, imagine this and I might have to erase and redraw. This would be perpendicular to the axis of revolution. We would have a delta y. We'd integrate with respect to y. Okay, so far so good. But let's look at what's going on here. Um, we would need on this side, x is some function of y. And on the other side here, this would be to get our inner and outer radius. This would be washers. But on the other side, we need some other. x is a function of y. Okay, well, for x, for this function, right, y is x minus x squared. How in the world are you going to solve for x? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, right? I don't know. This is our challenge. Maybe you have some slick way of doing it. Um, but this is what makes this hard, trying to solve x as a function of y, or trying to look, take this equation and solve for x. So this is why we have, or can use, another technique. So here, let's look at a representative rectangle that is not perpendicular, but parallel to the axis of revolution. This would be like this. And the thickness delta x. This would tell us we are integrating with respect to x. But what's happening here? So when, when this gets revolved, let me draw my axis 
and I will revolve it about, okay, this is here, and then it goes all the way around. This is what happens with that little representative rectangle, like this. You can think about the actual solid with this region revolved around. It looks kind of like a bunt cake. I don't know if you've seen those before, but it looks kind of like that, or angel food cake, something like this. But you see, you take this representative rectangle, this is not slicing. The representative rectangle gets revolved around. We are parallel to this axis. And what this makes is called a shell. So this is the method of ooh, cylindrical shells. <laughs> okay, so here, this is the shell. And we are integrating with respect to x. Okay, so let us draw a shell. Okay, now we have to remember, see our representative rectangle? It is right here. Okay. And the thickness is delta x, and it goes all the way around. Now how, well, okay, I'm also going to, I could pick a little xi, either I pick the left or the right or the, um, I could pick xi. I guess in our book, when we do a remind sum and you just pick any point in the interval, it's an SI, but you can pick any point that goes out to here and you will have a radius. And then you have a height. Now, how do we find out the volume of this? Here is the idea, and I draw the picture every time almost when I do a shells problem, we can unroll. So if you think about cutting it here, Unrolling, what do you get? Well, we get a this, where the thickness is delta x. This is still the height, but now this, if this is radius r, this is the circumference, which would be like a 2 pi r. Okay, this is approximate. What is the volume here? The reason I unrolled it is to calculate the volume, right? The volume of this is 2 pi r h delta x, right? But now let's figure out all those quantities for our function. My height is x minus x squared, okay? Here. My radius, you go from the center, in this case it's zero, out to representative rectangle, it would be x. Or you could put x i's on all of this if you want to really think the remind sum. I'll just leave it like this. And then um, what else do we need? Nothing, because we have everything else. This would be my radius, this is my height, and then I have exactly the volume of a shell is 2 pi x, x minus, oops, x minus x squared delta x, okay. Which, I'm gonna be integrating this, so I will just do this, x squared minus x cubed delta x. Okay, well now I need to integrate, I need to, one thing that I am missing from labeling is my x values. And I calculated them here. I just didn't put them on my picture. X equals zero. And this is X equals one. Okay. Now I've seen mistakes with this before. People will integrate over the whole solid, but that's not what we do. And that's not what we do with the disk and washer case either. You integrate over where your representative rectangles would live, which is over the region right, just the region, then the rectangles are revolved around. So x will go from zero to one, okay, just over the region. So my total volume, I see by looking at here, the volume will be the interval zero to one of 
2 pi. Then I have x squared minus x cubed dx, which is um, 2 pi. And then I have x squared over 2 minus x to the fourth over 4 from 0 to 1. Oh, excuse me, x cubed over 3. Okay, now this makes more sense. Okay, so we have 2 pi and then a third minus a fourth. This is um, 4 minus 3 over 12. This is going to be a pi over 6. This will be the volume of my solid, my little bunt cake. <laughs> okay, wonderful. Let me interrupt the video you were watching while well, it continues, right? But I'm going to bring you uh, some examples from my smaller board. And this one is an important one as to why the shells method is easier. So let's look at this. We have a region bound by three curves, eight over X, 2x and x equals 4. I can immediately grab one of them. It's x equals 4. It's going to be here. Okay, and then, um, well, I can graph the line y equals 2x fairly simply. Goes through 0, 0, goes here. Then we're up at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 here. Maybe I'll make this one a different color. I'll make it brown. Here is y equals 2x. Okay, and then I should label my x equals 4. And then I have a third curve, which is 8 over x, so it's going to look like 1 over x, except it's 8 over x. And we know, for example, at 1, it goes through the, this point, and then at 2, it will be at 4. Oh, okay, well, I'll show that in a second, but here, and then at 4, we will be at 2. Okay, so this green curve. Here is y equals 8 over x. And I could have this point here, which is at 2, 4. I could have also solved for by setting the two curves equal, right? We could have 8 over x equals 2x. Means that we get 2x squared is 8. x squared is 4, and we would get 2 and minus 2, but the part down here, well, at minus 2, we're not really considering this part because once I have this third curve, x equals 4, it's this region inside here. So really, I just need this point for, the, for my particular region, and the point we see it here, it's 2 comma 4 is the point. Okay. So my region, I see here, it's all of this. And I'm revolving about here, y-axis. So here I revolve. Okay. Well, I could solve x as a function of y, solve x as a function of y. Um, here, x is already a function of y in a way. It's, it's constant. But if I try to slice this perpendicular to the axis of revolution, what I will need to do is you see, if you wanted to have a capital R and a little r to do washers, when you are between y equals 4 and this other one I can label y equals 8, if you're between 4 and 8, you have little r comes from this brown line. And similarly, if you're between, this is um, at 2, if you're between 2 and 4, little r comes from 
this green. So this is something you could definitely do using washers, but you have to break it into some of two integrals. You'll have one integral that goes from two to four, and, and then you would have this as the upper and this is the lower, or capital R and little r come from those two, of course, solved x is a function of y, and then you have another integral from four to eight where you use the pink and the brown. To me, it's much easier to take your representative rectangle parallel to the axis of revolution because, well, you don't have this, this problem of having to have a sum of two integrals. So let's do shells. In my mind, it's easier. This is one reason why it's so nice to have more than one technique here because shells is easier in my opinion. So we will go, you see, parallel to the axis of revolution. We have thickness delta x. We are integrating with respect to x, okay? And then here I see my region goes between x equals two and x equals four here, okay? So what will happen is this Representative rectangle here will go all the way around and make a shell, just like we saw in the last example, okay, where we have this thickness delta x, we have height, we have a radius, we unroll, and we get a rectangle, thickness delta x, same height, but now we have the circumference, which is 2 pi r. Okay, now what is everything here? Well, the radius, we have some little x sitting here. So the radius is just x. The radius is x. The way to really think about that, and I will actually, I think I will do this exact same region and just change the vertical line I revolve about so we see, because this can sometimes be what's challenging, but in here is the axis of revolution, right? Which in this case is x equals zero. And so the radius, we go from this x value to zero, that length is just x here. And then the height, of this rectangle, we see it. It's 2x minus 8 over x. Well, that's all we need. Now we can write down an integral for the volume. Okay, so we integrate over the x values where our region lives, which is between two and four. Or, you know, an equivalent way to say this is the, where can our representative rectangles lie? They can lie between two and four. And then we have two pi r h, okay, dx. The volume of this is two pi r h delta x. When we move into the integral, well, really we know it's a limit of Riemann sum, but this delta x becomes a dx. So let me do one more here. Four pi x squared minus six, oh, just minus 16 pi. Now, so let me finish here in this box. We integrate this, we get 4 thirds pi x cubed minus 16 pi x evaluated between two and four. If I am not mistaken, this should be 128 pi over three, okay? But, you see, we just integrated x squared and a constant, really. So what I was most interested in is this setup, finding the right r, the right h, and understanding the setup of shells. So what I will do now with this exact same example to illustrate 
especially this is a problem I see sometimes with students is I'm just going to change, but we're still going to do a vertical line so that we do shells. So now let's see what line do we want to do? Let's do the line. X equals negative two. It's something that's in my picture, so we can. I can draw it in the picture. Um, and this one, I'm also gonna say just set up only because set up only. Set up an interval. We will set up an integral for the volume of the solid obtained. Well, I just need to add this word. Okay. Okay, here we go. Now I have kept almost everything on the board. Okay, except we have a new axis of revolution. Maybe I should erase this a little better here, which is this line. I will do my new axis of revolution in blue. It's the line x equals negative two, revolving. But we still have, a, oh, this is also here. We still have shells for the, for the similar reason that I would have to break, if I did washers, for example, I would have to break it into some of two integrals. Okay, so I am parallel to the axis of revolution. I am shells, right? Now what changes and what doesn't? Well, maybe since I erased what was up here, we are still using the volume of a shell is two pi r h delta x. And we, we use this in the, the first example with this region too. Okay, we have this, we unroll, very nice. But what has not changed is the height because look, you notice I didn't erase or change my representative rectangle at all. So my height is still 2x minus 8 over x. Okay, but what has changed, what I changed in my picture was this. I changed it here and then I also changed it on my little picture of a shell. So what is my new r? This is what has changed. Well, let's think about this. Here is my, my x, okay? And before this was my line I was revolving about and this length was x, but now this is the line I'm revolving about. And this length is no longer x, it's x, um, well, plus two. This is x equals negative two. So the r is x minus minus two, or x plus two. It's this length, it goes from the axis of revolution to this, okay, it's here, but it's very small in this picture. So r is x minus minus two, or x plus two. And this is the only part of the setup that changed. We still integrate two to four. We still integrate two pi r h, dx, but now we have two pi r h like this, okay? So by moving this vertical line to not being the y-axis, now it was line x equals minus two, what changed in my setup was this, this radius of the shell, the little r, okay? This is the last example I'll do on this smaller board, and then I will take you back to the video you started watching. I think you will see, uh, you'll see a part A and part B from an old final exam. But first, let's do this solid. We will find the volume, but I'm gonna do this both using shells, where we are parallel to the axis of revolution, and I will slice perpendicular to the axis of revolution, which will be discs or washers. And I like this one because we get to, I'm going to purposefully use both techniques um, and we'll see, we'll get the same answer. 
it's very good. We can see the two techniques sort of one right after the other for the exact same solid. Okay, so first let's graph this region. We have, just like the last example, we have three curves that bound our region. We have x equals two. We have y equals zero. And then we have y is the natural log of x. Well, natural log, it goes to the point one zero and then it kind of curves like this. And this y value here, well, if x is two, the y value is natural log two. This point is two comma ln two. Okay, here is my region. Maybe I will color it in red. It's bound by these three curves. And then I'm revolving about the y-axis. So none of this will change in either part. I'm still gonna take this region and I will revolve about the y-axis. I'm just gonna do this problem, like I said. First, I will do, well, let's do uh, shells first because that has been what's new and the focus of this video. And then I will go back and slice. So the first thing I will do, parallel to the axis of revolution here, parallel to the axis of revolution, gives me a delta x. This will be, so way number one is shells with respect to x. Okay, so I have my shell, delta x, we have a height, we have a radius, we unroll, we get a rectangle. This is delta x, the height, and circumference, two pi r. Now, what are these here? Well, um, the height, we see this, okay? It is just ln x. My height is ln x. And my radius is here. Just like in the last example, I am revolving about the y-axis, or I guess this was the part A of the last example. So I have a little X sitting here. Maybe I will put that here and put my thickness at the top. And so my radius is X. Okay, so I integrate. Well, my X values go from one to two, one to two of two pi R H, uh-oh, and then it would be delta x when we move to the integral becomes dx. Okay, look how beautiful this is. How do you integrate x times ln x? This is by parts, liate, right? We have, if we write this, we have the very first one, which is the log. You will be ln x, dv is 2 pi x dx. Okay, then I differentiate 1 over x dx. I integrate, I get pi x squared. Okay, then I have uv minus the integral v du, but it's definite. So you can either find an antiderivative first or you can just remember it's definite and evaluate. So this integral becomes, okay, we have pi x squared ln x evaluated between one and two minus the integral one to two of um, pi x squared times one over x dx is a very nice Recollection of integration by parts. And here, this becomes four pi ln two. But you see when I evaluate at this lower limit of integration, we have pi ln one, ln of one is zero. Okay, so I will, I just have this. So then I have one to two of pi 
x dx. Okay, looks good. This is 4 pi ln 2 minus pi x squared over 2. We have 4 pi ln 2. We have minus, this will be 4 pi over 2 plus, um, oh, plus pi over 2. So we get, I'm running out of space, but you see it's a negative 3 pi over 2. So let me just put my final answer here. And in fact, I'll leave it here so that we can compare. I have 4 pi ln 2 minus 3 pi over 2. And this was using shells with respect to x. Okay, now, technically, I'm finished with the problem, except I mentioned that I wanted to do this one both ways. It's a very nice problem for this. Not only is it neat to see this both ways, we got to practice integration by parts, and we're about to use properties of log n and the exponent. So it's very, I think this is a very beautiful problem. Okay, what I need to do is erase my representative rectangle. Now I'm just looking at the region again. And, okay, I'm using exactly this, except what I'm gonna do is slice. So I will slice perpendicular to this axis of revolution. Maybe I'll go ahead and write my new representative rectangle is going to be like this, is gonna be delta y. So way number two will be, we see, washers with respect to y. The first thing that I need, and I mentioned this briefly at the start of the last one, um, even though I, I kept with my shells with respect to x, but I need, this function is already x is a function of y, I need this one, y is ln x, to be x is a function of y, and, well, we know what it's gonna be. This is just x equals e to the y, right? If you try to solve for x in this equation, just raise both sides e to the, we get that. Now I'm gonna write x is a function of y here. Okay, so we're going, well, look, I see my capital R, it's here, right? Two, I see my little r, it's here, e to the y, okay? Well, maybe I'll even draw my picture to remind us. This is our first uh, washer's problem in this video. Okay, so when we have a washer, we have a capital R, we have a little r. And then, well, we have thickness in this case. My thickness is delta y. I will be integrating with respect to y. And we see our limits of integration here. We go from y equals zero to y equals ln two. So far, so good. And I already mentioned, capital R is, it's this. So we have some y here. It's this length, which is two. And little r here, it's, it's this length here which is e to the y. And then, maybe I'll go ahead and write this, maybe up here, the volume of a washer generally is pi, capital R squared minus little r squared, and then it would be delta y, okay? Immediately, I can write down my definite integral that gives the volume of the solid of revolution. I can do this right here. So we will integrate. Now this is important. I must use the y limits of integration. I don't wanna go from one to two. That's not y limits of integration. This is gonna be an integral, well it says it here, with respect to y. Everything must be with respect to y. y goes zero to ln two, and then we have pi, capital R squared minus little r squared, okay, then dy. Okay, well, 
Let's do one more step before we integrate. What is this? e to the y squared, well, properties of exponents, power to a power, we multiply powers. So this is an integral, zero to ln two of, let's say four pi minus pi e to the two y dy, power to a power, we multiply. Now, this is not, too challenging to integrate, I get four pi y minus, it's gonna be a pi over two e to the two y. All of this evaluated between zero and ln two. Okay, we're almost there, we need to evaluate. We, I hope we get this. If we get this, we are happier than can be because <laughs> we will have done it correctly and we see that doing shelves with respect to x or washers with respect to y we get the same volume which is the volume of this solid okay so i have four pi ln two minus pi over two e to the two ln two and then subtract off here we get zero plus, here we get pi over two, and then e to the zero is one. Now, let me come down to the next line because leaving it like this, it's not obvious that it equals what we found before. Again, this is e to the ln two quantity squared. I can use the same property of exponents that I used to go from here to here. So here I get four pi, ln two minus, this would be pi over two, this would be e to the ln two is two, we have two squared, maybe I'll write this, which is four, okay, you get four pi ln two, oops, ln two, four pi, minus four pi over two plus one pi over two is minus three pi, over two, and this is from the work above. So here is our final answer using washers with respect to y, and you notice, ta-da, we have the exact same volume. Well, I would hope so, because it's the same solid we are calculating the volume for, we just did it two different ways. So this is a setup only problem. And this was off the final. And the final did have a second part. Maybe we will do that after that. So there's a part A and a part B. This is part A. So we can, to begin, we will set the two curves equal. We have x squared plus 1 is the square root 8x plus 1. And then this gives x squared is the square root of 8x. Okay. Now, how are we going to solve this? Well, you can square both sides. We get x to the fourth is 8x, and now we can try to set, get something equal zero and solve for x. So we have x to the fourth minus 8x equals zero, or we can just factor x, x cubed minus eight equals zero. Now you see the solutions. One is x equals zero, and the other one, when x cubed is 8, we get 2. And the points here, well, you could really evaluate either one to get the actual point on the graph. At 0, we are at 1. And at 2, we are at 5. OK. Now let's graph this. And it doesn't have to be a perfect graph. In fact, you could use your calculator. I'm going to graph it just based on what I know about the shapes of the functions, so I will do this up here. I need 0, 1, and then I need 1, 2, oh, 2, 3, 4, and 5, which is here. And then 1 looks like a quadratic, it's a squared. This will be here. 
this is y is x squared plus 1, and the other looks like a square root, it'll be concave down, so it will go something like this. Okay, y is the square root, 8x plus 1. Okay, something like this. Now, then I need to revolve. So now we have, a, it's not the x-axis or the y-axis, we have another line we are revolving about, which is x is 1 minus 2. So this is my axis of revolution. And here's my region. Okay, we have everything now. Now let's think about the two possibilities that we could do because we know we have two choices. We can go parallel to the axis of revolution. This would be shells. We can go perpendicular to the axis of revolution. This would be discs or washers, okay? Well, perpendicular to the axis of revolution, um, this would be with respect to y. These two I could certainly solve for y, and there's no problem with this really. Parallel to the axis of revolution, this would be with respect to x, and I think I'm gonna do it that way just to practice um, shells again, but really either will work, you would, I will just do it this way. So I'm gonna go parallel to the axis of revolution with my, rep oops, that's a delta x, with my representative rectangle, okay? Here, and it goes all the way around, makes a shell, okay? Parallel to the axis of revolution, okay, wonderful. So my shell, let's draw it. It's gonna be something like this. Something like this, that here, that here. Okay, the thickness delta x. The height, well, you would take, and this is what you, kind of what you do when you did area between the curves, but this length is the higher one minus the lower one. So the height here, h equals, it's the square root 8x, plus one minus x squared plus one, the ones will cancel and we just get the square root eight x minus x squared. This is the height of my shell, the thickness delta x. Now we have to think about the radius. So here would be my axis of revolution, right in the center, my radius would go out here, r. Now let's look here. You would have a little x here. Or you could write an xi if you really want to think about the Riemann sum. I'll just write it as x. The radius of my shell is this length to here. So this is r, the radius of my shell, which is not x, but you see the length that r is x minus negative 2, which is x plus 2. Okay, well now I unroll I typically don't memorize the formulas or the volume. I just draw a shell, unroll it every time, and then I write down so I know this is going to be 2 pi r, like this, and delta x, like this, and this will be the height. And now I can write the actual volume of my shell. This is at the shell. Okay, well I have a 2 pi x plus 2. And then the height is square root 8x minus x squared, and then delta x. Right? Yay, we have everything. We have two pi radius, the height, delta x, volume of the shell. Now we can finish the problem, which is just to set up an integral. Again, you really have to think here. You're not integrating from minus two to, um, let's see, my endpoints go here, two and zero, we have them here. 
You're not integrating over the whole range that the radius can take or something like this, just over where your representative rectangles can be. And that goes between x is 0 and 2. x goes 0 to 2. And then we have this whole thing, 2 pi x plus 2 square root 8x minus x squared dx, like this. And this is, okay, this is it set up, okay. This time we want to revolve about the x-axis, so I can even erase the word line. And we want to revolve about the x-axis, but I won't repeat solving, maybe I'll just say recall. x equals 0 and 2, or the points, it was 0, 2, no, 0, 1, and 2, 5. These are the, for intersection of the two curves. Okay, maybe I can even draw the graph here. I'm revolving about the um, x-axis. Oh, it's going to go below. Um, maybe I'll just draw it little. So I have 0, 1, and 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, it's up here. And then I have something that looks like an x squared. Well, is x squared plus 1? Then I have something that looks like a square root. And then maybe I should have done these in two colors, but I'm just redrawing the exact region that we already had. I'm not quite as careful. This one here, I'll put an arrow, is y is the square root 8x plus 1. Okay, it was basically this, and x went between um, 0 and 2. The difference now, as I mentioned, here. Okay. Well, we have some options still. You could go parallel to the axis of revolution. This would be with respect to y and do shells. We'd have to solve this x is a function of y, x is a function of y. We could do that, but um, it's already set up as functions of x. I would just slice it. So we slice. We again take our representative rectangle um, as a rectangle with respect to x, but this time we are perpendicular to the axis of revolution, okay? Perpendicular, which means it's gonna be washers in this case because of this gap. So you revolve this, it's gonna slice, right? It's gonna be washers, okay? Washers, so let me draw a washer. We will label and then we will set up the integral. This is also a set up. This was part B or maybe this was part A and the other one was part B, but in any case, we are doing both parts. Okay, so with a washer, I have a capital R, I have a little r, and um, now I look at my, and then I have a, this is with respect to x, delta x. Okay, now let's look at my region. Well, up here, this is capital R. It is this function, so capital R, the square root 8x plus 1. And then little r is here. This function, little r, is x squared plus 1. Okay? So the volume of the washer is pi. And then we have capital R squared square root 8x plus 1 squared minus little r squared, okay, delta x. This is the volume of my washer. Now I can finish the problem, set up the interval. Again, my x values go between 0 and 2. And I have pi. I have the square root 8x plus 1 squared minus x squared plus 1 squared dx. Okay, this is the answer. Uh, 
Okay, I have my parentheses right. I was just checking. This is the answer for setting up the volume revolving about the x-axis. 